Hey guys, it's me, Crazy Honda Chris, here in the sales apartment at Randy Keel Honda in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Congratulations on your brand new Honda Ridgeline RTL. This video is going to show you guys how to customize your vehicle settings so when you drive off the lot, you are set for success. Everything's set the way you want it. Now, let's say as you set things up and you want to change things, you're always welcome to come back to this video to change things as you see fit. All right. Now, there's going to be no right or wrong way to do this. I'll probably turn everything on or keep things at kind of a normal most people put it at. So just keep that in mind uh, from here. Okay. So first thing you got to make sure the vehicle's on and running. You are in gear is in park. It cannot be in drive or reverse. You have to be in park so you can access the vehicle settings option. Now, once you find the vehicle setting option, go and select that. And this is where all the magic is going to happen. First thing we're going to be selecting is your driver's assist system setup. This is for all of your Honda sensing features. You can customize if you want all the beeps, none of the beeps, the sensitivity, or turn things on and off. So first option is going to be a forward collision warning distance. This is when you're driving down the road. The car is going to sense if you can hit an object in front of you because of that front facing camera on the windshield. And when do you want it to warn you? Do you want it to warn you as soon as possible? It's out long distance, normal, or short. The object is going to be closer than the other two options all right so how it's going to do that it's going to tell you a break on the driver's interface then it's going to slow the vehicle down then it's going to try to reduce your speed or even stop you so a lot of people keep this on normal because that's what honda has to set for it as a default now great thing about this is you go through these items you'll see what we're going to be messing around with and then what's already selected on the right hand side now the next one is your acc that's your adaptive cruise control or vehicle detection beep. I'm going to assume you guys already watched my walk around videos or you already know uh, what the adaptive cruise control is. If not, check out my video link down below and it'll show you all the cool standard feature functions on this car if you haven't yet. Now this is simply when a car gets in and out of range of your adaptive cruise control um, it will beep every time someone gets in and out of range. You can turn that on or off. So as it you know, as you're driving down there, car gets in range, your car slows down, you want it to beep, beep, beep to alert you, hey, someone's in range, someone gets out of range, you'll speed up, a beep, 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 beep to let you know, hey, they're out of range, I'm speeding up. So I'm going to turn that on so people can create their own opinion. Next one's going to be a road departure. This is the sensitivity of your road departure that keeps you in the center or on the road, okay? So you have a normal, wide, and warning only. Some people don't want it to bring you back, you know, and just want it to warn you on the driver's interface. That's when you will select the warning only. But a lot of times people keep it on normal from this point because they like it to, you know, as you do your highway driving, it brings you back and keeps you in the area lane. Next one's your lane keeping assist, spin speed. So every time you go out of your lane, do you want the car to alert you? So this is you're driving down the road between 45 to 90 miles an hour. You go over a little bit, it's going to beep, 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 beep brings you back and recenters you or do you want it to be quiet and this brings you back and resetting you so we're going to turn that on just for the heck of it next one's going to be a blind spot information system so it's probably the way you want it now as you're going to notice next to your side mirrors on the inside there's a little square with a little picture up there when, I, when you're driving down the road you have to be going at least 20 miles an hour faster when a car gets in your blind spot, that's going to light up bright orange. It's a solid orange light. Now, when you have your turning indicator on while somebody's in your blind spot, it's going to flash and beep at you. That's probably the one that most people like. It's the first option selected. Or do you want it not to make any noise and just give you the visual flashing and solid light? So now that's going to be everything underneath driver's assist system setup. We're going to back out. We're going to go to meter setup. If I can use the touch screen. All right, so there we go. So the first thing is going to pop up is your outside temperature display. So as you're looking at your driver's interface down in the bottom center, you'll see your temperature from there. You can fine tune that bad boy within a five degree swing as you see fit. I'm going to keep it on the default. Next one's your trip A and trip B. You can choose when your trip A and trip B automatically resets between these three options. So just every time when you refuel or when you turn off the car or when you decide to do that, I talk a little more about how to reset that within my walk around video. Trip B is gonna be the same exact thing. Now, adjusted alarm volume. 
This is for like your turn in indicators, warnings, stuff like that. How loud or quiet would you like those options to be? Next one's gonna be a reverse alert tone. So every time you put the vehicle into reverse, it gives you a nice little audible sound to let you know, hey, I'm in reverse. Next one's gonna be a fuel efficiency backlight. So as you're driving down the road, as you're looking at your digital, digital speeder meter, there's gonna be a green bar that's gonna appear when you're being fuel efficient. It's just a visual coach to let you know, good job, you're being fuel efficient. Then when you're not, it's gonna be away. So do you simply want that on or on? Next one's your turn by turn. So this is when you're using your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto for like your navigation, stuff like that. Do you want it to warn you, hey, 300 feet, turn left. Next one's gonna be your speed distance, miles per an hour, you can do kilometers per an hour. We're going to keep it on miles for an hour. Next option is going to be take on her. So on your driver's interface, on the left circle, you'll see that's going to be numbers, one, two, through eight, right? That just shows you your RPMs. Do you want that on or off? So if you want to clean it up a little bit and not have all those numbers on there, you can take that off or you can keep it on. It's just a little visual for you. Next one's going to be a rear seat reminder. All right, so simply when you turn off the car, it's gonna warn you to check your rear seat as long as someone opened up the back door, all right? So if I put some stuff back there, I come in, I drive a little bit, shut up the car, boom, rear seat, check it. It's gonna see it right there in the driver's interface. Uh, that's everything from that point when it comes to driver's position setup. Only a couple options. Next one is gonna be your memory position link. So this is when you can set up your two seat memory on your driver's side door, you'll see there's a one, two, and set button next to the handle as you get out. On the back of your key fob, if I can get it to see, you see there's a driver one, and there'll be a driver two. So you can simply link the one setting to the one fob right here. Do you want that on or off? Now, see position, movement on entry and exit, when this is on, when I shut off the car and I open up my driver's side door, the seat moves back a little bit to make it a little easier to get out. And also when I get in, I shut the door, I turn on the car, the seat moves up a little bit to get me back in. So it makes it easier than just getting it in and out. If you don't like it, you can turn it off. Next one's gonna be keyless access setup. So this is when you have a key fob in your pocket, your purse, your jacket, right, for the door unlock mode. You walk up, you put your hand in the handle. You want all doors to unlock or just the driver's side door? Now, if you select all doors, just to let you guys know, I can see my kids do this. There's a delay. Put my hand in the handle, there's a couple second delay, the doors unlock. But the kids, they're always so excited for some reason to get in the car, they yank in unlocked door handles and it drives me crazy. Now, to train them to know when the doors unlock, you got your keyless flash right here. So when then I put my hand in there and the doors lock or unlock, the lights will flash and they get a little visual to know, say, yep, I can yank on the handle. And then the next one also to take it one step further, the car will beep, it'll make a sound. Put my hand in the handle, one, two seconds, beep, beep, beep. All right, doors unlock, get on in, little rascals. Remote start. I talk about how to use your remote start on my walk around video. Do you want it simply available at all times or do you want to turn it off and no longer have it available? We'll keep it on, we live in Iowa. Next one's gonna be a walk away auto lock feature. So simply when this is on, right? I have the key fob with me. I shut the car, I shut the door, no key left in the car, I get 10 feet away. Boom, and it locks all the doors. I never have to second guess myself to lock my car doors, did I not lock my car doors? I just know they're locked. Now if you leave a key in the car, it will not lock your keys in the car, okay? Now that's everything from that point. We're gonna go to light setup. Most of this stuff you guys won't play around with, but let's go through it though. So you got your interior light dimming time. This is simply when you uh, shut off the car, you shut the door in X amount of time, your interior lights will turn off. 
Next one is a headlight auto time. So let's say you're driving home and to work late at night and you shut the car, you shut the door, boom, 15 seconds or whatever time you select, your headlights will turn off. So I can see probably you guys playing around with this one a little bit. Depends, you know, where you go at night. It's a well-lit area. I don't know if it's one of your concerns so you get a little more light action to see what you're doing. Auto light sensitivity. So as your headlights are set to auto, how soon do you want your day or your headlights to come on? Okay, so how soon do you want your headlights to come on between day and nighttime levels? And the last one here is your auto headlight on with wipers. So long as your headlights are set to auto on your wiper stick and you turn on your wipers because it's raining or snowing or whatever you need them for, your headlights will automatically come on. So we'll keep that on. Now we're going to go to door and window setup. You got your auto door lock. You just got in the vehicle, you're about to drive away. When do you want your doors to lock? With speed? That's roughly about 10 to 15 miles an hour, or as soon as you shift from park or have it off and just whenever you hit the door. Once again, no right or wrong answer. It just depends on what kind of driving you guys are doing. You guys hauling the kids around? Is it just you? You know, stuff like that. Auto door unlock. So this is simply you arrive somewhere. When do you want your doors to unlock? So you can turn this feature off just whenever you hit the unlock button. Or when you turn off the vehicle, boom, doors automatically unlock. All doors when you shift to park, or all doors when driver opens up door. Uh, a lot of times people keep it usually on the first one or the second one. Uh, a benefit about the first one, I know the way we have my wife's CRV set up to that, is that if she goes somewhere by herself or with the kids, she can turn off the car, she can be in park, if she's somewhere new, she can mind her surroundings before she gets out of the vehicle, you know. Uh, parking lots, people usually don't pay that well of attention on what's going on. Um, so that way, the doors will remain locked, the back door as well, until she opens up the door, or I do over there in the passenger side, and that's when the doors will unlock, okay? So whatever you guys want to do, pick your poison. Key and remote unlock mode. So this is when you have the key fob. I hit unlock, right? I hit it once. Do you want driver door to unlock or just all doors? Now, if you double tap it twice, unlock twice, automatically all doors unlock. So with that being said, sometimes people like to, you know, do it, you know, make up their mind on the fly. So they keep it on driver door only as you hit it once and you double tap, all doors unlock. Now, I'm assuming you guys probably want your car to flash uh, some lights at you to let you know, hey, I'm locked or unlocked. Give you a little visual as you hit buttons on your key fob. So we'll keep that on. Security relock timer. So this is when you have the key fob with you and you hit unlock on the key fob kiddos have 30 seconds or 60 or 90 seconds to open up a door if they don't open up a door in that time frame automatically the doors will relock all right so 30 seconds no one opens up the door boom locks up i never had to hit the button to think about it last one here is going to be your tailgate locking so simply uh let's say when you hit lock on the key fob, do you want your tailgate to lock? So that's going to be great for those who's going to have a uh, cover for the bed on the truck, right? So no one can access the bed of the truck. And lastly, there you are, maintenance. Just if you have any maintenance stuff you need to reset, everything's going to be right underneath here. All right, well, thank you guys for watching this roughly about a 15-minute video. Hopefully, I answer a lot of you guys' questions. I try to slow down a little bit. I know we had a lot to talk about. Once again, if you want more information on this vehicle, check out my walk-around video. I try to hit every single button. I try to slow down. It's hard for me, but I try to do it. If you find these videos helpful, it takes you guys a couple seconds. It helps me out to know to keep these videos going. Hit that like. Consider subscribing to the channel and also drop a comment down below. I would love to hear what kind of color you guys get or maybe trim level, things like that. Or maybe you can't find a particular video or recommend a video that would help you guys out. Put it down below in the comments, okay? All right, this is Crazy Honda Chris at Randy Kill Honda. I'll see you guys at the next video. Bye-bye.